One has already advanced onto that winner's bracket and one has fallen. But now we determine the next two placements for user and Bly here in game number two of Group F. That's right. Let's take a look at these two players. We have, of course, <laughs> on the left-hand side, Bly from the Ukraine going up against Uza from Poland. Who's that guy? The teamless, faceless void himself. Now let's have a closer look at Uza, man. I mean, you know, that is a great picture. Uh, he looks fantastic. He's in shape. He's handsome and dashing. Mm. And this, of course, is his breakout performance in StarCraft II. A charming, charming fellow indeed with locks of golden hair. As he is the clear underdog here in the WCS. He's not much is known about him. Yes, you have players like Welmu coming up. Yes, there was Tefal. Uh, but they had slightly more establishment already happening in the European scene. User, right now, he is very much a stranger to yeah. a lot of people and apparently also to a lot of the internet. <laughs> I mean, for what I know for, for user is that he was a former Brood War player. Yeah. Um, was probably, I can definitely say safe top 10 Poland as a Brood War player. Mm. Um, could even be top five in his prime for, for Poland back in the day. And Poland, for, for any of you that didn't know, was a very strong country when it came to Brood oh, War. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's always actually been playing, he's always playing StarCraft 2, don't worry. He's been playing StarCraft 2 for a very long time. Always low grandmaster without any tournament results. He's super aggressive, and he loves Mutalisks. And he's got a very heavy mid-tier playstyle, lots of yes. mid-tier units. And we'll, no, we'll talk a bit more about him after, but he's going up now against Bly, which you all should be familiar. He got second place at DreamHack Bucharest last year, losing out to teammate Nurcio. And of course, he did finish, and did play, should I say, in last season's WCS as well. Yeah, Bly for the longest time had a very, very crazy, quirky style. Uh, even placing hatcheries in people's bases, just trying to go for craziness there. Uh, but he's, he's since then stabilized quite a bit. Uh, and played out a few more macro games. And that is reflective in his win ratio against Protoss, yeah. which has been absolutely phenomenal as of late. Yeah, and he's living inside the Acer team house yes, with some awesome people. He's living there with Slayer Seller, or formerly Slayer Seller, now Acer Seller. And he's also living with MMA. He's living with a couple of other players there, which are really going to increase his level of play within StarCraft 2. It's very simple. Live in a team house, play within the team house, talk within the team house. You're going to start to get an increase no matter which way you look at it, as long as you're focusing, focusing hard on improving your game. And now we're going to enter this Zerg versus Zerg between these two players to find out who will play versus Naniwa and who will play versus Lucifron. Yeah. I don't really know which way to call this. I think Bly, because he's more known, is more of a favorite into this. Definitely. But Uza's run through Challenger was remarkable, the, the games he pulled up. It certainly was. Uh, defeating people like Feast and Cass in the group stage of Challenger. Very, very impressive wins there. But that does not do his ZVZ justice at all. Uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Well, one thing to note, about, uh, with any Brood War Zerg player, they're pretty good at Zerg versus Zerg. Yeah. Let's look at Jadon. Let's look at Uzer. Pretty good. Apparently. Pretty good. All right. Spawning down to the bottom left hand corner, right hand corner even here. As our blue Zerg, we have Acer Bly. And spawning up to the top left, we have our red Zerg, Uzer. All right. It's time to shine, buddy. Let's see how well you can play here in the WCS Premier League. This is where the big boys play, and it's now your turn to play with them. Mm -hmm. And as you said, he had a great run through Challenger League, beating yes. out Feast, beating out Cass in the brackets, no, in the group stage, sorry, of Challenger League. I think he fell short in the bracket stage, if I'm not mistaken, versus Shuttle, yep. the Korean Terran player. But that, you know, could arguably be expected. Shuttle's a good, good player. Um, but Uza is 100% aggressive mid-tier Zerg player. For any of you that really followed Hyun, and his progression in StarCraft 2, mm -hmm. when he first entered, he was exactly the same. Yeah, he really so was. So heavy mid-game, major bailing play, major link play. To a certain extent, he's still like that a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, big, big Roach Hydra play. That's how Uzi's won the majority of his recent games. And for those people that haven't really followed too much of Uza, Uza recently placed second in EPS Poland, and Poland is still a hard fought over country, only taking losses against Dystar in mm. the end. So once again, a little bit reflective on his ZVT. Uh, but aside from that, Poland is a country that is very, very similar to Australia in the fact that a lot of Zergs dominate that region. There's one or two players that like mm. Dystar, like Mana, that aren't those Zergs, but Uza, 
In terms of ZVZ, he beats a lot of those Polish players. He beats people like Tefel, like Nurcio, like Dana. So the, he has very, very good ZVZ, and that's also shown in his statistics in terms of having something like a 70% win ratio uh, in this matchup at the moment. Uzer for me is the in, he's the Premier League complete underdog package. Yes. There is nobody that is you know least expected to win here. It would be a miracle if he was able to do so today. Blyce had a lot of experience playing against other Zerg players. You know he was in you know the the top tier amount of Zerg players when Zerg was dominating in Wings of Liberty. Mm -hmm. Already we see two different styles coming out from either players. We have a gas taken at a normalish time here for Bly, and he's going to be able to get that gas income, get speed, get bailings, get aggression. But Uza, despite how he said he likes to play, has taken no gases so far, is sitting back gasless, only just now taking his first gas. This increases his economy by so much. He's been focused on minerals for the first four minutes of the game. Yeah, getting all of that coming on in. Uh, that being said, though, he won't have speed as quickly as Bly would do. Uh, so he's going to have to rely on other tactics to actually defend himself if Bly would want to get aggressive, mm. like Queens, uh, maybe even some Sim City at the front with evolution chambers or things like that. Well, look at that. A queen in the drone wall. <laughs> and <laughs> even a little bit of a pick off there. He's trying to just make sure that the, you know, Bly doesn't get inside and see that he has no gas. Uh, that's something that neither of these players, or actually, excuse me, a zirkling from Uza did manage to squeeze its way into the main base of Bly to see his gas. Sneaky, so sneaky. now he knows. And actually, look at that. Well, I keep going back at myself. Bly gets one in there too, and now sees <laughs> his. Uh, and Uza, through having a higher mineral count earlier on, is able to throw down a spine crawler knowing that I got a little bit more minerals. He did get a little bit supply block there just by a couple of seconds. Uh, not a big, big deal, but uh, something to talk about. I imagine the nerves of him now being, you know, playing in maybe an online cup or two, not really doing too much, yeah. just EPS, Poland. And now all of a sudden playing in the Premier League. <laughs> it's a big, big step up. Granted, he did have his run through uh, Challenger qualifiers and then Challenger League to get a little bit more acclimatized to it. But he is going to start throwing down those evolution chambers at the front here to keep himself a little bit more defended, uh, sealing up that area a bit. And this is this is user's kind of standard go-to style in ZVZ right now, <laughs> just racing straight on up to that layer to get that mid-tier tech going. Yeah, he's going up to layer here with the Rochon and Evolution Chamber coming down. With the layer, he can get the Overseer to find out exactly how many drones my opponent has and what tech he's going for. And then with the Roach Warrant and now a second Evolution Chamber, he's created a wall off and we're playing a very Roach-heavy focus game yeah. here. I won't be surprised if he actually went just straight into those double upgrades. It's something yeah. that he does favor quite a lot. Uh, the the ranged attack upgrades into roaches uh, in other matchups, um, uh, specifically ZVP. Whoa, well, those ugly actually do a run in here. Did he not know that gap was there? It was, I, I knew uh, that gap was there, and so did Blair as soon as he saw yeah. it. That's a little bit unfortunate, especially if he loses a queen. Well, he's saving it for now. The drones come offline here to try and do combat with these Zerglings, and he's even bringing the two queens from the natural, but he loses quite a bit of mining time with that, and he exposes the fact that his layer was uh, significantly quicker. Loses two drones, does not hit lava injects, and as you said, a little bit of mining time. So that's a small little victory there for Bly, who behind this is doing nothing but the exact same. Droning up, got his layer finished. There's the roach speed. We should see both players, you know, it's... Excuse me, it's not an, an expensive thing to get an Overseer. Ooh. And at this level of play, it's very important to know are you droning or not. But Bly throws down the Spire here. He does this, man. I mean, it doesn't matter what comes along and changes in the game. He still loves his Spire play. So he's going to try and go for that. Meanwhile, back at home for Uza, we have Burrow on the way, Apollo. Yeah, Burrow's uh, an interesting upgrade here, especially if he's going to go very heavy roaches. Imagine if Mutalus had targeted them down and he's able to burrow one at a time mm. and then pop back up again. He can run around and burrow units inside the main base. So it's going to give him a very, uh, uh, give him a nice aggressive tool. Yeah, I think it buys himself so much time in comparison to, you know, the position. Because mm. Bly's Mutalisks to defend, they're always going to have to stay there to try and make that work, uh, to try and make the defense work. And he actually scouts out the Spire. He spots the Spire. And at this point, he has to focus on two things. Run by his defending his third and then getting across to do something against the Spire. Do you see a Hydralist then? Do you see an Infestation Pit? Do you see Anti-Air? Certainly not. There's really nothing there for him to contend with that. And not only that, but he also spots that he hasn't taken his third gas either. So uh, Bly should know that there is the potential for just 
a lot of Roach aggression coming. He hasn't seen anything else other than that. And through all these Ling attacks, uh, you know, 10 drones, or ten, at least they're behind in 10 drones with a couple of queens going down too. It's not looking so good here for Uza as uh, eight Mulus are on the way out. He's got a couple of, uh, well, he needs to do damage, whether it be killing the third base or trying to break his way through the natural. And the natural. Why doesn't care about the third base? He's just trying to wall off. Yeah, the natural's been completely conned off here. How well will he be able to break through? It looks like pretty darn quickly, but the Mutalists will pop very soon. That being said, though, he doesn't know that Burrow is present just yet. So that is, once again, going to cause him a bit of an annoyance. And maybe this will buy Uza enough time to actually deal with things back Splitting at home. his roaches up. Some on the natural, some in the main. Trying to get the economy focused or down as quickly as possible. Can do. Does oh. end up burrowing. Oh, and that's annoying there for Bly. And now Overseas have to get morphed in. A queen goes down in the main base. And now Bly has dropped down in supply. A nice move for users to get in to these bases. And he's ripping Bly apart. Bly's finding a very difficult time. He's losing a lot of drones. He doesn't really have any lava either because he's not lava injecting. The use of burrow. Yeah. This is really good here for user. He's even droning up behind this, getting his spore crawlers down. The time he has bought with this slightly unconventional style right now in ZVZ is monumental, and Bly is having a hard time dealing with it. He's going to lose his natural heart tree. Uza, oh. Uza, Uza has just uh, dealt a major blow here to Bly, taking down that third base. He's got his three bases up running himself with an infesting in pit on the way. Spore crawlers coming down all over the place as well. And all of a sudden, Bly is in a very difficult position. Yeah. He's kind of got to use his Mutalist, which is the advantage he has in this game, to do what? He, well, he's going to pick off a lot of Overlords in the center of the map, that's for sure. There's a bunch of them here. Yeah, I guess they were trying to maybe form some kind of creep highway or even just a bad rally there for user. Uh, but now, uh, that's that's quite a bit lost. But he does have the defenses back at home to deal with the Mutalists, and he's doubling his opponent's drone count right now. So user, he's... As long as he stays sturdy and stable, maybe transitions onto the infestation, but he already has it down, uh, and just kind of lands a few fungals if he needs it when he pushes across. Roach Infester for him is a very, very desirable composition. Yeah, especially with the amount of gas he's got banked up. Look at how much gas he has. That's a lot of infestors yeah. once these overlords finish popping. He just spent a lot of uh, money on these overlords. Banelings do come in from the left-hand side. It looks like the evacuation was called pretty fast there, as he only managed to pick up a couple. Still 52 workers to 37 right now. The Mutalist trying to find a way in to do some damage, but every time they fly towards those spore crawlers, devastation for those Mutalists occurs. I remember, roaches that make their way across the map, there is nothing at home apart from droning happening because he's playing from a behind situation with mm. his drones. So the Mutalists have to come, run back, fly back uh, to deal with them. It does technically have that Overseer still there, so should be able to deal with that once they end up starting to burrow. A few of them just burrow in interesting locations. I guess just to split them up and make it a little bit harder for those Mutalists to fully clean up all of this. Because, you know, if you're splitting them up, you have to have two Overseers in position to actually deal with that. Well, let's have a look at the damage dealt at this point. Is, uh, you know, 54 drones to 44. He's still behind. And as a Mutalist player, you always want to be ahead. Mm. You want to be able to make transitions away from Mutalist because they're not going to carry you through the game. With Infestors and now hi the Hydralist then coming down, eventually there's going to be an army that just beats Mutalisks. And with no transition already activated, what can you really do? How are you going to yeah. play the game? That that's the most difficult part of this game now for Blair to figure out. An interesting choice in the One Swarm host. Uh, I've seen a few Zerg players do this recently, actually, but uh, I don't know, maybe to fool his opponent out or something like that. But mm. aside, aside from that, just ignoring that completely, he has great anti-air potentials uh, on the way very soon, not only with the Infestors that are already out, but also those Hydralisks. And he even does end up burrowing that one. I wonder if he wants them to just see the inf Well, I mean... He oh! oh, dearie me. Oh, ouch. That's painful. As a, as a player that only has those <laughs> units. That's very painful. Oh, no. How How is that even possible? But anyway. Behave, uh, Kolaris. Behave. Hashtag behave, Kolaris. I'm even on a different PC. <laughs> <laughs> it's just haunting you. I know. But Bly, of oh. all people, maybe thanks to you, Kolaris, escapes with the Mulus. They're oh, alive. Yeah. <laughs> well, they are indeed. They are alive. Hashtag as, alive. Uh, hashtag alive. Hashtag behave, oh, guys. Damn it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, the hype's going down behind this for Bly. So trying to transition on to catch his opponent uh, a little bit unawares, as it were. but Because he just can't combat this army if he were to try and make the exact same army. So I guess the 10 roaches are on the way here. Is he going to actually just try for it? Uh, he's just here. Uh-oh, fungal. So be careful. Oh. I mean, at this point... 
you can defend ah. because you have sport crows and queens. Mm. So it's not too necessary that you sit back and defend. So you just walk out and allow your sport crows and queens and maybe even a couple of loose hydras at home to defend yourself. And this attack is, as a Mulus player, only defended when you already have the, the transition, the follow-up. Yeah, yeah. There is no follow-up. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> trying to go to Hive. He's trying to go to, I don't know, Great Aspire? I don't know. But at this point, this army is a little bit too strong. Just a little bit too strong. Just a little bit. 107 army supply right now to 76. And busting down these spine crawlers before they even finish up is very annoying. A good fungal again. Blythe forced to go for the engagement. Had to end up risking the fungal here to try and hold his opponent off. But the Hydra just rip apart those mutalists anyway. And user playing ZVZ out very, very well. Very well. And, you know, at this point, it's 184 supply to whatever else is left on Blair's side. 93. He's somehow managed to squeeze a couple of units around this left-hand side, but there is no real way no. to deal with what's uh, what's present. And this means that there you go. GG for game number one. User will take the first game. And that means he's one away from advancing on to play Naniwa. But I actually... I, I had to I have to correct myself a little bit. I didn't do users ZVZ justice. I said at the very beginning before the broadcast yep. that uh, maybe a lot of people haven't given uh, users ZVZ justice because uh, it's actually not around 70%. Uh, it's actually around 88%. <laughs> um, 88? How many games, though? What's the sample? Not too many. It, and again, it's only in the Polish scene. But mm. again, Poland has some really, really good Zergs. So uh, Bly is going to have to pull out all the stops here to deal with him. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty solid game, I'd like to say, there from uh, from Uza. He set up his build pretty strong. He, you know, did take damage from the Ling run by, but that's almost expected because yeah. Bly sacrificing those Lings that could be defending against the Roaches pushing to lose them in doing some damage. So that's kind of expected to take some uh, hits there. But overall, I liked his play style, and uh, we'll see if he can manage to beat down Bly. Imagine in a world where Uza went through first place here a complete unknown to a certain extent, just coming into Group F with, you know, with, with Lucifron and Naniwa and being able to win the group. Imagine that. That would be very impressive here from Uza. This is his best matchup, though. ZVZ statistically, if he were to go up against Naniwa later on, that's around a 56% win ratio. Again, not against the most well-known uh, Protoss players, people yeah. like uh, Pal over in Max Flow uh, in, the, in the Polish scene. Uh, so... Going on to game number two, Belshia Vestige is our map here, Apollo. What are you, what are you thinking? Belshia Vestige, I, I really, in Zerg versus Zerg, the map doesn't really play too much of a big, you know, factor into how the game's going to play out. It, it's either going to play one way or the other. I don't think there's too many map differences that can change a player's style. So coming into Belshia Vestige, I think we're going to play uh, pretty much a similar game if both players want to stick to what they use in the first game here, unless we see change-ups of style, of strategy. I think um, going into a, a second game uh, for Uza, I don't think the Burrow thing works again, right? I think that maybe, you know, Overseers are there to try and deal with that initially. Does Bly play Mulus in the first place is the big question, true, right? True. I mean, sure, Burrow can work against that specific strategy, but is he going to use Spire play again? He is. Because hmm. I don't think th this map, I feel maybe very, I think both players will play the same. It may be double evolution chamber for both players uh, into just heavy roach uh, hydra infested play. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a few options, all stemming pretty much from the roach, aside from, you know, the mutilist player that does come along. There was a little bit of laying attacks and things like that early on, and then some people trying to go into the mid game with just lings, mm -hmm. but it's really roaches that have found, once again, prominence in this matchup. Uh, as it was for a long time in uh, Heart of the Swarm. Uh, yeah, I mean, th the biggest change was just the Spore Crawler change that yeah. really pushed it back over to Roach play. There are still Mutalist builds that work when you go try to go for the Spire play, but it's all about just building a few of them. The, <laughs> at the start of Heart of the Swarm, actually, there was only Mutalisks. It was Mutalisks yeah. or, you know, yes, or, it or Die. It was that simple. Um, there was the, the one difference was where sometimes you saw a player try to get Infestors out, his, his Mulus count would be low, so he'd get hit by a timing. That was the only yeah. way that that didn't play out Mulus versus Mulus. But ever since the Spore Crawler change, being able to three-shot a Mutalisk, being able to put them in different positions to, for example, use a build that TLO likes to use, which we saw Symbol use in WCS career as well, which is like, you know, Nidus Worms with drones coming in to build Spore Crawlers offensively yeah. towards your opponent's <laughs> natural. So there are a little, you know, different sets of builds that beat Mutalisk play nowadays. 
Looks like we are waiting on Bly. Yeah, Bly generally watches almost every single replay uh, whenever he yeah. loses a game. So uh, we are just waiting on him to join into Belshia Vestige for our second game. Um, and I think that just in general, uh, I th we said it like a few weeks ago, and then Artosis remarked on it recently as well, that Mutalists have kind of been pushed back to that point where it's... Uh, where it's, it's a very kind of uh, Wings of Liberty-esque style that Mutalists play the role of now, just securing that middle of the map, yep. uh, pushing the uh, Overlords back and getting yourself that map presence. Um, but user it, with that Burrow play, I mean, it kind of it kind of duped him a little bit. It did. It was pretty nice. You know, just great efficiency, being able to borrow that. It's caught by surprise too. But if Bly was able to win this series and play Naniwa, I think we'd see some Mutalists, man. Yeah. I, I know Bly loves his Mutalists. That yes. would be uh, great. But looking at the amount of Zerg players that we've got through this season, uh, we've got Tefl from Group A. We've got Stefano from Group B, and then Rhett from Group E. Three. Uh, group e, Group Three. Group, group three. E. The third player there. Only three Zerg players making it through so far. And a lot of people, are all, you know, fan favorites are expecting Lucifron and Naniwa to make it through today. Is uh, Bly or Uza going to be one of those players to join those other three? We'll see, as we now load up onto Belshia Vestige here for game number two. Uza currently one game up. Arguably, I would say for a lot of people out there, if he takes this series two to zero, that's quite an upset for people. I think so too. <laughs> all right, let's get into <laughs> this game to find out if that upset can come true. As we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner as our Red Zerg, currently one game up, he is Uza. And spawning up to the top left as our Blue Zerg, representing Acer, representing the Ukraine, he is Bly. Remember, this is the last set of games today for this week, and we'll be back for the last two days of the round of 32 next week on Tuesday and Wednesday at 6 p.m., local time once again and of course if you want to come to the round of 16 mm. why the hell not of course you can see on screen right now this is where to get tickets so for anybody watching that's around europe maybe further i don't know if you want to come from far distances albeit you're welcome go to that uh, link as you see down there where you can find some tickets to come watch the games live free drinks and food and Come say hello to all the players. Get to meet your favorite players that have made it to the round of 16. LGIM Jurgen's going to be there. Pretty cool guy. MC's going to be there. Also a pretty cool guy. And Stefano's going to be there. Pretty cool guy. And then the seven other players are going to be there. Pretty cool guys. Partying hard. All right. So with this game, actually, you know, game oh, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> a little bit of pause here for Bly. Maybe he has a bit of a sound glitch. Uh, but you guys should join in the discussion on Twitter, uh, hashtag WCS. Tweet us who you think is going to advance from this group. Uh, we've already seen maybe a little bit of an upset here. We'll see how this unfolds. But let's jump back in. All right. Both players opening up for a uh, 15 spawn and pull here is uh, the most common of openings in Zerg versus Zerg. It's a balance between economy and also defense. Not to be able to go for a second base too fast, but being able to, you know, get the spawn and pull late enough that you can still grab that expansion at a good time. And the, the real question in Zerg vs. Zerg builds is when do they take the gas? Because that's the big difference between b potentially aggression uh, or not. I won't be surprised if we saw Bly just go for the same gas timing that he went for again. And there we go, that's on the way. But likewise, Uza is going to go for a similar gas timing. And I like the adaptation from game number one to game number two. Uh, it was clear that, I don't know if it was nerves, or I don't, I don't know what the factor was that was there that uh, allowed those rumbys to get in, but getting your speed at a similar time to your opponent and taking the precautions against that, I think it's a, it's a much safer way to play. I like getting speed early. Yeah. I'm, I love speed early, actually, quite early. Um, I like to be greedy and get a gas, a uh, hatchery gas then. Then, then spawn and pull. Uh, get the best yeah. of every world, apart from when they get all in. Um, <laughs> but at this point now, uh, we do have both players recognizing each other's build. The one part which is missing is, again, the gas. Is when you go spawn and pull, then hatchery, you actually can't put the overlord inside the main base to have a look at their gas timings. Mm. Naturally, through going for a spawn and pull faster, you have a queen faster, which pushes back the overlord. So neither of them know exactly what's going on, which is why we see Bly actively searching for that. And has two zerglings out. And he, uh, in an ideal world, wants to find a way to get into the main base here. Uzer, same. Or does he try to block? Ooh. 
the, if, oh, there's no queen in the main base. He's going to spot it. If there was a queen that popped out in time, it probably could have stopped it. But now he goes in and says, all right, well, you've mined 100 gas. And now, actually, another 50 on top, which means... If another 50 gas has been mined, the most likely option is just the 50 gas required to build the bailing nest. And user, there we go. That does go down at the very, very front here. So pretty much taking Bly's build from game number one and utilizing it himself as Bly. What is he going to do? I would be very surprised if Bly completely skipped bailing nest. And there we go. That does go down as well. Bly is not the kind of guy that skips that bane nest. Um, at this point, if you want to play super defensive, you get a spine crawler. But both players at this point, okay, there's Uzi's option. So with the spine crawler coming down, he's probably going to play the defender. The defender, when it comes to Ling Bailing versus Ling Bailing, the majority of the time has the advantage. Um, as you can see, Zerglings do make their way into the main base here for Uzi into Bly's uh, main and sees exactly the same amount of gas has been mined. And now we have the aggressor versus the defender set up. We have 10 Zerglings being made for Bly. Yeah, and these are going to come at a time where, actually, if he keeps them hidden, well, actually, you did see pop four pop out at the very front there. Uh, so maybe he'll read into that and he'll spot it with an Overlord eventually. Actually, interestingly, he doesn't really have Overlords down that left-hand side. I don't think he saw this. Yeah. He's building two lings, but he's got nothing else. He's got hmm. two at home, two defensive buildings getting morphed anyway here. But I don't think he saw these at all. No, he didn't. I mean, they snuck out, and uh, this is very, very annoying for him. He's forced to pull the drones to that mineral patch at the left hand, on the right-hand side here to try and save some of these drones whilst those banelings do end up morphing in. Zerglings go for the engagement here for user, but uh, has to play very, very carefully. Oh, oh what a great connection there by user. So he does pick off three drone kills, with the Bly, that is, but we have two different playstyles again. Very fast layer, four gases, which is going to be mutilous play, versus one, one uh, melee upgrades coming in. I wasn't sure mm. which one it was going to be, so I... They put a bit of a pause in there. So it's going to be a very heavy Zergling style. This is actually not that bad against Mutilus play. As long as you get the right Zergling counters, yeah. snipes on queens, drones, and potentially even hatcheries. Yeah, Once that plus to. one carapace finishes, it's very difficult to stop them. Yeah, you're right. The Banelings not really able to kill off those Zerglings as well as they would like to once that Carapace does end up finishing. The third base is now on the way for user, but this has been spotted by Bly. So Bly, with these Lings in prime position to pounce, should be able to deny this pretty quickly. And the Spire is going to go down behind it. So in essence, the Zerglings denying this hatchery are also buying him some time to get that Spire up and running for a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth, really, there, if he loses his hatchery. It's not a part of the plan. Yeah. Uh, losing the hatchery is never part of the plan or anything else. Ooh. And does force the cancellation there. One Baneling runs into two Banelings, and it's not the best of trades. 16 Zerglings are on the way. Queen's on the... Well, the Queen on the natural is not Larva Injecting. Well, it's there now. But uh, with 16 Lings, he's got to clean up his natural first. 24 more are being built here for Bly. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's a, it's a good re response from Bly because he saw that his opponent's lair was very, very late. He saw double evolution chambers pumping away and only Zerglings, so no Roach War or anything like that. He knows that it's going to be a lot of links very, very fast here. Still, Bly doing an excellent job here, preventing his opponent from taking a third base. Bly's managed to get his down faster here. And now that we do have, actually, look at that. We have plus one melee being made here. Saying, you know what? Screw you getting your plus one carapace. I'll just upgrade my bailings as well. So they do one shot you. Yeah. That's uh, pretty clever here by Bly in the end. But those and those seven mutalisks are now on the way. Morphing these banelings in right above Bly. He knows exactly what is going on. Forces the cancellation of them as well. Bly in game number two seems to be taking all of the angles and, and coming out triumphant. Bly's winning almost every little fight here. Yeah. Um, I mean, the difference in resources lost between them isn't a big, big deal, but these small fights, Bly's won every one. We do see now with Uza, with his upgrades completed, a counter attack has been launched by Bly on this left-hand side. He's going to pick off that third base if there's no units there. As his users are going to try and pick off his opponent's third base, but those Mutalisks should be able to kill off quite a few of the Zerglings. I don't think they kill all of them before that hatchery does end up dying, but it's going to be base for base pretty much here. Oh, Baneling is actually connecting well there for Uza. And the Zerglings do get pushed back along with more Baneling connections by Bly. Every single engagement, once again, getting the upper hand. Base for base is a clear advantage for Bly. Yeah. Very simply, he's got Mutalisk. He's going to be able to harass while being on the same amount of bases. They didn't even lose base to base, so... You know, Bly maintains having his third base, can defend it with Zerglings that we're going to have, or uh, his Banelings will have plus one melee very shortly as well. He's even putting the counter pressure on. Bly in this game, very, uh, you know, pretty much is just 
outplayed his opponent yeah. in every small little fight. And that user right now is very, very heavily supply blocked. Getting out five uh, overlords at this point to try and get out of that is pretty annoying position for him to be in. He's trying to get the pathogen glands going here to just shut down this mutilist play, but I don't think there's going to be an option to. He's even going for Nidus Swarm because he knows that Desperation is at hand. Yeah, this... I don't... <laughs> Infestors and Zerglings and Queens are going to be his uh, units of choice here to try and stop this mutilist play. Zerglings do bring down that third, and they do get a couple inside the main base. Looking for that Queen, of course. Yeah, good move here by user. I um, wonder if he could pull off oh. this Nidus Worm play. I, with with investors and queens, if he positions it oh, well and keeps the anti -air. is dead in the middle of the map. He's got nothing unless he spends, sends out a zergling. He has no, he has nowhere to use the Nidus Worm, and it's going to yeah. get spotted really early here. This is a bit annoying for him. There's another um, overseer actually marking him, but the mutilists pop forwards, see Ooh. that, and even kill off one or two of the queens. A good fungal, but I don't know if he has enough energy to fully continue chaining it. I'm not sure if he does. It's going to be close. One more fungal. He. Oh, the Queens are doing a really, really good job of actually breaking them all down, and oh my god, in the end, the Queens do the job. Wow, he lost everything there. Lost absolutely everything. This and game. Look at the supply now. I mean, <laughs> Uza has the advantage yeah. in terms of supply. He's, he's got better melee ground upgrades and may not have the numbers, but he has the better upgrades and more units coming out. He's got a Nidus Swim on the right-hand side. Going to attempt to attack on that third base. Losing those Mulus was pretty bad. Yeah, it really, really was. Can these Zerglings those somehow mutilists. get to the right? I shot those. Before the Nidus Worm is ready. No. No, he can't. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, he can. Yeah, he should be able to shut that down. A few units will oh. pour out, but it's not going to be enough there. Bly does shut it down. And he's transitioning onto Hive. But you're right about those Mutilus. They were supposed to keep his opponent at bay for a long, long time. And now Uza. Well, he's going to try and find another route here. Well, how does he... What is he... He's going to take a third base. He does have rope speed on the way. He's got some great upgrades on his units for sure. Um, has the um, plus two melee down. Uh, uh, plus two uh, melee carapace. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Plus two carapace <laughs> and plus one melee. And Ooh. now he is researching plus one attack. And Bly here, I think he's just trying to buy himself time in the middle of the map because that Ultralisk cavern going down, he's saving up a lot of gas to transition onto that <laughs> as well. And there's another Nidus Swarm. Well, the counter attack's it. pretty good here. They do have the plus one melee attack. And there's oh, there are a lot of units popping out here. But Roaches are going to come out. And Roaches with Queens and Infested Terrans, they're going to be pretty good against Ultralisks. Yep. Who's a breakthrough with the Nidus Swarm here? Bly's got to be careful. He's got to hang Ooh. on. Not too, not the best fungal there as he throws down a few Infested Terrans. Buying himself time to get those Queens maybe out. The Roaches and Queens need to get in the Nidus Swarm to go for this push. Yeah, they do. I mean, can he break they? these spines? Look how many spines there are. Where are, where are his other units? He needs those here with this Infestor army. The four Ultralists are now in production. And Bly has bought himself a lot of time. He wasted a lot of energy there too. Ooh. And those Banelings, one does connect with the front here, but these units are armored, so they're not going to die off too easily to those Banelings. I think Link's here trying nice to run catch. on around. I think that the best thing with getting a third of his own is just to kill the third of Bly and go back to defend. Yeah. Oh, but Bly is launching a counterattack. If Bly brings his third back down, okay, Uzan knows what he needs to do. He's actually got units to defend it. So at this point, you just increase your supply count. You've got more money, you've got more income. Wait till whatever's coming on two bases comes to you. It doesn't matter. Like, he even sees the ultra, the Ultralists on the right-hand side. And they're out here trying to make this work out for him. Those Ultralists actually do catch up to losing Festers. Losing a few of those could be extremely detrimental to him. He has to flee with everything. The Queens are guaranteed to die. That little encounter attack didn't really do a huge amount there. But it's the Ultralists that are going to tell the tale for now. Oh, it's going to be an awkward fight, this is. There's yeah. five Ultralists versus 21 Roaches. Infested Terrans are going to be very important against these Ultralists to try and surround them, almost. Like just blocking it Blocking every them, way. allow yeah. the Roaches to do their damage over with their range attack compared to the, me the melee. Remember that all these ultras are not very well upgraded. No, not at all. And, and user actually going for swarm hosts now here, but those ultras, they have to be very careful. Clear Constitution Roaches can actually ch chase those down and do a bit of damage to them if he's not careful. This game is uh, <laughs> it's weird, man. Pretty wacky. Yeah. As we do have uh, a, a bit of a lead here for Uza. Four ultras coming down. If they're able to bring down this hatchery, yeah, well, they're going to try, but the Roaches are going to pin them in, and those Infested Terrans, oh. they kind of block them in for the most part. 
And it's, well, it's going to go down that hatch race. So the Ultralisks do what they need to do. But he loses so much in that. The counter attack for Uza right now, if he breaks the spine wall, it, it's just over. All right, I think he kind of realized, Bly, that these aren't really going to work very well. If I keep on, I'm not upgrading them. I'm not continuing through with them. And then he's moving over to Greater Spire. Um, the Greater Spire, is, uh, if there was a Spire down, it's obviously not going to work, but there isn't in this case. But can he even get there? He's a long way away. Mm. Uza's got 21 roaches and 7 swarm hosts. He's going to start launching uh, and sieging onto these spine crawlers, which are defending what Bly has behind lines. Very, very annoying position here for Bly to be in. This game has been so back and forth, and maybe a few of these investors will get caught off guard. So those ultras cleaving those up pretty darn quickly. And he's just going to march on maybe for a counter, but I, he can't counter. He has to deal with this. He has to. So as soon as he realizes what's going on, very simply, he throws down a spire and builds corruptors. But he doesn't realize what's going on yet. Bly's launching another attack towards his third. He's got Ling's already there and more on the way. He's trying to limit his opponent's resources so that that Spire isn't possible. It, it, it can't come down because he can't afford it. Look at his gas. There, there is none, really. Yeah, if he can get new Broodlords out, then I think he'd be in an all right spot. But he's going to have one or two eventually. There's not going to be too much firepower in that, though. And then when Uzer is allowed to reply, but he did get that hatchery down to the bottom left as well. Wacky game, man. Wack wacky is uh, <laughs> an understatement here. It looks like Ultras did find a couple of loose roaches. I'm going to try and push those on back. Nidus Worm's there as well. If he kills the Nidus Worm off with the cleave, he can prevent the retreat out here. Yeah, but, but he's got nothing to put this off. But four Brutal yeah. are getting morphed now. Uzer still has no idea about this. No idea. And, and he has no anti-air at this point. There, yeah. There's, what, two single queen now? And... Oh, oh. He just needs to see it. <laughs> yeah, if he, he was able to, to see it, then it's a lot easier. But Bly's hiding this really, really well behind these spine crawlers. No overseas even bothered to go in, which is a little bit surprising oh, at this point. Forwards here, trying to kill off some of these ultras where they can, but with the spines actually helping them out quite a lot as well there. And the roach is sitting above the swarm hosts. It means that the swarm hosts do take a lot of cleave from those ultras as well. Bailings even move forward and detonate on a lot of this. The army is slowly being taken down. And with the Broodlords, they can eventually greet this army as well. And Kill off a lot of it. He killed off all the roaches. Still, resources are just being invested away from uh, the spire play. Has he still not revealed the brood? Oh, yeah, okay. He has indeed now revealed the brood lords. So he knows that those are there. Uh, and he's still just building roaches. He needs, to, he needs to go for something else. It has to happen. Yeah, he needs to make a decision to get some anti-air. Um, it, it's kind of simple because he's got nothing that shoots up. And brood lords are up in the sky. Yep. And the hive's now on the way for user. Okay, so. that's an interesting choice. Yeah. I mean, maybe if he builds queens and vipers? Maybe? Maybe. Lings are actually attacking a few of these swarm hosts, and they are very low, along with the roaches as well. These uh, swarm hosts need to be very, very careful as they do retreat on back. Whew, what a game this is. Um, as as Bly now takes, uh, well, at least I'd say the lead, despite not the supply leads. He's got units that can't be touched at this point. Hive's a long way away from coming in. And yeah, another counter-attack here from user. Actually killing off a few workers yeah, that's himself. Nice, actually. Very nice. Workers uh, killed, so only 12 to 7. And it's 43 to 52 in favor of user right now. So the economies are still going to be very, very even. Oh, actually, no, they are not. What on earth has been going on? <laughs> it's the, the, the income for user is fantastic. And he's shut down probably the last mining base for just a while whilst that third finishes up. He just needs time. Yeah. He just needs time. Eventually, he could be Broodlords. But is the time there? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he'll go towards Vipers. He's got a Hydro Sten coming down as well here. That's the only thing that makes sense, by the way, from the, from the Hive. Yeah. I think the funny thing, though, is that is that with the five Broodlords, or four Broodlords, whatever it is, it's so hard to actually kill off this quickly enough to kill off uh, the position where you're getting those Queens up, getting those Hydro getting those Vipers up and running. So I, I don't think that Bly can actually fully kill this off just yet. Well, this is uh, one game to remember. Best bookmark this game in the future. As Such Queens nasty. are starting to get in there, doing a bit of damage. One Broodlord does fall there. As Roaches, as uh, we did see, breaking towards the third base. Another Broodlord is getting targeted down. Remember, there are going to be Vipers coming out very shortly if to start gaining some energy to absorb some of their own buildings to be able to pull these guys in. The anti-air at this point, five Queens with three more on the way. It's a rarity that you see spore crawlers chasing some broodlords into a disadvantageous position, maybe for the broodlords. But I mean, <laughs> it's occurring here. As how many uh, hydras does he actually have? Any? Not yet. Hmm. 
not yet. He's, I don't think he can really afford Hydras. I'd probably just yeah. stick with Queens and Vipers. Whoa, pulls one of them forwards, and that Broodlord gets completely obliterated Can't there. Can't really lose his Queens, though. At this point, anyone knows that a low economy game, or at least you should know, in a low economy game, energy units are the best. Yes. Vipers, Queens, both energy here can, can heal each other and then can, can absorb buildings to keep on pulling these in. Hydralists are being made, though. Six <laughs> of them are coming in. And brings down a spine to try and kill off some broodlings as well, or at least tank any damage that he can do. This point of contention right now for Uza is so important to keep alive. He has to keep this base alive. If he doesn't, his economy is going to be crippled just as bad as Blyos was for a long time. I think that the, with the swarm host out in the middle of not not doing much, they probably should be sieging the third base, right? To prevent Bly from mining as well. Yeah. Nice transfuse, nice pull in there by the Viper. He's going to pull in another one now. Slowly but surely, these broodlords can't keep going. Yeah, I mean, there's he, Hydras now. He, and he has limited Corruptors as <laughs> well that have all dissipated oh, back there the, as well. On the top right here, the Swarm Hosts. Oh, one does go down, but the one. Lings, poor little guys. They're and they're going to go down. And now just sees these Swarm Hosts into that third. Yeah. Keep hammering down with these free units. Bring the defense down. And that's where the wind can lie here for, uh, for Uza. Ooh, he doesn't want to move those Hydralists too far forward here as well. But he does bring one of the Broodlords forward. That nice. should die off, and it does. And now there's only six left. So it's a matter of time here before Bly actually loses them all with those swarm hosts. Eventually, are they going to siege up that base? What a game this is. The Brutal is still keeping the gas down low here, even though he's got a thousand in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to mine some more <laughs> ways. And also keeping the distraction from the Broodlings away Ooh. from the drone line. Another one falls down and a second. Oh, good pulls, good pulls. And behind this, Bly's actually transitioning onto some Mutalisks. I'm, I'm not so sure that's the best transition here. As he, well, I no, mean... No, the Swarm Hosts! Maybe it was a better transition. <laughs> no. Swarm Host dying is so sad. Especially the noise. Yeah, that's, well, that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I mean... The Mulus play is going to be very difficult to make work against Queens, Vipers, and Hydralisks. Four Broodlords do remain. Another one gets yanked in. Oh, it just maybe just, 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 just still about gets away. gets away. And Yuza here, he's he's caught between a rock and a hard place. I, how do you deal with Brood... I mean, he's dealing with the Broodlords in this position as well as he possibly can do, but he never has fully enough to kill them all off in a good in a good pace. Yeah. Uh, and Ultralisks, I feel, that are, are a better choice for Bly here against what his opponent has. Yeah, I mean, that's what he seems to be going for, right? Yeah. They're better against Hydras, but still, the Ultralisks aren't upgraded. The Roaches and Hydrasless are, with Queens just regenerating energy over and over and over here. Whew. I... I, I'm lost for words partially on this game. It's it's very, very strange. Look at that pull, the mini pull. And he still gets it! Oh! <laughs> the mini pull works. All right, one more one more uh, abduct here, and this uh, Broodlord is gone. And that's it. The next threat is the Ultralisks. Yeah. But seven inf Oh, seven infestors. Seven infestors. You can even double pull these. They yoink. just need to, but... Uh, no, yoink. All right, so now the next focus is like, all right, that's cleared up. I've done it. <laughs> I've finally got rid of the Brulers. Took uh, me a good few minutes, but now it's time to finally get the rest of my infestors ready and go take what's mine, which is this 2-0 victory and a position in the winner's match to take on Naniwa here. If Uza pulls this off, that's exactly where he'd be going. Yeah. 30 minutes worth of this game, Sean, and neither player has really got a fourth base truly up and running, which is yeah. kind of a rarity for a 30-minute game. It's been so back and forth, so many hatchery kills, so much damage being done to either player, uh, and it's been very relatively even in that regard, but user, he's just mined that a little bit more. Every unit counts, and those formulas gone. But the Ultras count is higher now, but there's a lot of energy on these Infestors. There's Transfuses as well. Now, this is a very strong army that Uza has. Not, yeah. a, not an army we see very often, uh, should I say, uh, this low supply count. And is he going to make his movement across here? He hasn't decided to take a fourth base. I think the, the optimal decision is probably just to move out. He knows that Bly could be building anything, whether it be more Brutals, more Ultralists, yeah. a, a different type of army. It's almost respect for each other's resilience right now because, well, okay, user decides to breach that respect and just start to move out. It's going to take a while for those queens to get over there. Granted, uh, could have thrown down another Nidus uh, if he'd have been sneaky about it, maybe to transfer those over a little quicker. But he certainly needs those with the army. Transfuses here, as well as the DPS from the queens, is going to be fantastic. I don't think that Bly can win the fight. Yeah. He's up, he has got a few more upgrades for his Ultralis here. Oh. Oh my, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Yoink. You see the, the ultralist like, no! 
<laughs> and the old is like, yeah. like, no, no, no. <laughs> With little side blades. That's really oh. funny, actually. Uh, but these ultralists, they can't win the fight, so it's just going to be a ring around the rosy a little bit. They're going to try and run around, but look how much damage they're already taking versus these plus two locusts and roaches. There's a few Zoglings in the third base here, and he's going to kill off that Nidus Worm. It's a, it's a nice pickup, uh, and the Viper's just gaining some energy above them to straight oh, so nice. they pull once again. Good block with the Infested Terrans. He's trying to block where he can. And oh, he did yoink. block one and pulls in another Ultralist, and slowly uh, these Ultralists are falling down. Another one goes down too. More oh energy from the hatchery. <laughs> these Vipers. <laughs> but uh, look at the three units, or the four units if you include Swarm Host. Queens. Vipers, Infestors, and Swarm Hosts. Yeah. Super cost efficient. You, as long Amazingly. as you don't lose them, you just regenerate energy uh, or send more locusts out, and that's superb. Those lings down to the bottom left actually got a lot of kills there for Bly, so he has limited his opponent's economy drastically, but Uza, I don't know how Bly fights this army. As long as Uza gets himself in a spot where he can take up the straight-up engagement without Bly constantly going for the counter-attacks everywhere and trying to run around him, then... Yuza just wins, but Bly's doing a good job of keeping him pinned back for quite a while. Yeah, and, you know, Bly's sending these four Ultralists down again. Last time, I think that the herd, if you can even call a, a you know, a pack of Ultralists a herd, um, was like seven or six mm. or seven. It was, no, they, he must have lost like three to four. It could have even been eight. But now it's just four, and they will get surrounded here if uh, Uza plays this correctly. The Infested Terrans oh, block them in. Block them in. They're blocked in. They're Great. actually blocked in. And one of them will end up falling as well as the more infested Terrans are trying Excellent. to get out. No, no, let us out. Let us out. And one does get Excellent out. Excellent <laughs> blocks there with the infested Terrans. And now four Ultralists went in. Queen would love to tag the kill on that, but oh. uh, not quite enough damage, unfortunately, buddy. That Queen's got nine kills. Impressive. It's a Slayer. It's a Slayer, man. Um, one of the Queens has got 15. Really? Which one? Uh, actually, the other one's got 25. Whoa, these Queens. Hard the second veterans. one at the back. Not the, not the back one. Yeah, there you go. There you 25. go. Uh, and now this army is strong. Oh, yeah. It's been strong for a while, but there, there's no... Ooh. The, what, what can you look retaliate with? Yeah, look at the army supply. 113 to 28. Uh, yeah. And then you've got Infested Terrans, Locusts. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of free army. That's even... Oh, well, that's a lot of spines, but... There goes those uh, <laughs> those blinding clouds to make sure they can't poke away at them too easily. Multi-use Vipers here is... It looks like Uza comes in towards the end of this game a wow. long i say long it's only 35 minutes but it did feel long a long game here and the second map between these two players in their first game of the day the prude laws get fungled and the hydralists go to town this has been one of the more interesting zvz's for a long time and a, a user here Bly, a clash of styles going up against one another means that in the end user was able to vanquish Bly with an interesting composition. An interesting <laughs> composition, a strategic slow game here. Uh, yeah. A really uh, a strategy game to its finest, but a game to remember, a unique game here at the WCS Europe <laughs> Premier League, of course, in Season 2, as the Queens trottle their Lag? way forward. Really? Kolaris, if it's you. If it, um, I think it's me. Hashtag behave, Kolaris. It is following me around. It's <laughs> some kind of curse. All right. It looks like we are about to have the death of Bly unfold <laughs> as Kalaris needs to behave. It'd be great if like these guys could get angry, get out of the game, Kyolaris. It's time, it's done. Get out of the game. And well, Uza, he just pushes on forwards, kills off the rest of the army. There you go, GG. Uza takes the series two to zero. What an interesting series. What an interesting series. One to remember, as mentioned earlier. But it is Uza, the one that takes the win, two to zero, and moves on to play Naniwa in the winner's match. Interesting results here, and Uza could go for the entire upset. Imagine if now Uza marches on forwards to defeat Naniwa. There are possibilities of this happening. There certainly are. There's possibilities, and what a world we would live in if that was to come true here. Of course, Naniwa, second place at DreamHack Stockholm, third and fourth place at MLG just a couple of weeks back. Uza has accomplished, what was it, a second place in EPS Poland, and that's it. So uh, a big yep. difference in results, and we'll find out how that series will go when we come back from a commercial break.